Hi all. So this is a very short video on the topic body fluid compartments wherein we will be covering just the must know points. Okay. So we know that the average adult contains around 60% uh, body weight is composed of water. The rest 18% is composed of protein and related substances. 15% fat and 7% minerals. So of the 60% of water we need to know how are the, this water divided in the human body so what are the body fluid compartments so as i said before total body water is 60 percent of the body weight so if the adult male is around 70 kg then he he contains 42 liters of total body water this total body water is distributed in the intracellular fluid as well as extracellular fluid what is meant by intracellular fluid it is the fluid that is present inside the cells so we can say that the intracellular fluid the extracellular fluid is separated by the cell membrane so two-third of the water is present inside the intracellular fluid that means around 28 liters 40 percentage of the body weight and 28 liters is present in the intracellular fluid the rest 20 percentage is in the extracellular fluid which amounts to around 14 percentage now in the extracellular fluid which means as i said before it is the water that is present outside the cell that again can be divided into two categories one is interstitial fluid and the other is plasma so we can say that they are separated by this capillary wall we've got blood or plasma inside the blood vessels and the fluid that is present outside is called the interstitial fluid so this 14 liter is divided into these two compartments so around 15 percentage of body weight that means 10.5 liters is in this interstitial fluid Whereas 5 percent of the body weight that is 3.5 liters is in the plasma. So now we have to know how the different body fluid compartments are measured and for this we have the indicator dilution method in which we inject an indicator and then find out its volume of distribution so that we know what the volume of that compartment is. So to find out the volume of the total body water we have got indicators like Deuterium oxide, tritium oxide, antipyrin and aminopyrin. Deuterium oxide, tritium oxide, two oxides and we've got antipyrin, aminopyrin, right? And then we've got, we know the total body water is divided into intracellular and extracellular fluid. So, in order to, the indicators to find out the extracellular fluid are inulin, sucrose, mannitol and sodium thiosulfate inulin sucrose mannitol and sodium thiosulfate so what about intracellular fluid intracellular fluid cannot be measured directly and thus what we can do is we can find out the total body water and subtract it from the extracellular fluid okay next we said the extracellular fluid is further divided into interstitial fluid and plasma so the plasma can be found out the the volume of plasma can be found out by indicators like evans blue and serum albumin labeled with radioactive iodine evans blue and serum albumin labeled with radioactive iodine so that is the indicator for plasma what about for interstitial, interstitial fluid the interstitial fluid cannot be measured directly but it can be found out by subtracting ecf the subtracting plasma from the ecf volume we can find out ecf volume we can find out plasma volume and subtract it to find out the interstitial fluid so that is how we can measure the different body fluid compartments next very important concept is the composition of body fluid compartments so we should know what are the different cations and anions present in the two major compartments that is intracellular and extracellular fluid so first we will see about the cations so the major cation present in the extracellular fluid is sodium and it's around 142 milliequivalents sodium is present in the intracellular fluid also but only around 12 milliequivalents the next cation is potassium. It is present in the ECF at around 5 milliequivalents, whereas potassium is a major cation of intracellular fluid around 140 milliequivalents. The next cation present in the extracellular fluid is calcium around 2.4 milliequivalents, whereas in the intracellular fluid, calcium is very less around 0 0.0001 milliequivalents. So you can see that is almost negligible amount of calcium in the intracellular fluid. And finally, we've got magnesium around 1.5 milliequivalents in the extracellular fluid, but in the intracellular fluid, we've got around 20 milliequivalents. So you can see that the distribution of cations in intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid is very different. Important point to remember is that the major cation in ECF is sodium, 
the major cation in icf is potassium right now let's move on to the anions so the major anion in the extracellular fluid is chloride that means it, it has around 110 milliequivalents whereas in the intracellular fluid is only around 5 milliequivalents the next anion present is bicarbonate which is around 27 milliequivalents in the extracellular fluid whereas in intracellular fluid is around 10 that means a little less when compared to the extracellular fluid now the major difference is that intracellular fluid contains a lot of proteins which are negatively charged non-diffusible substances like proteins and the next major anion that is present is phosphates so the important factor is that intracellular fluid contains many anions when come other than the chloride and bicarbonate when compared to the ecf one important point to be noted is that when we say ECF it can be interstitial fluid or plasma. Plasma can contain interstitial fluid proteins but does ICF. not contain proteins. Okay. So these are the major differences here. So remember what is the major anion in ECF? It is chloride. What is the major anion in ICF? It is phosphates. Okay. Then finally we will just finish, finish this off with a physiological basis question. Why is dehydration more common in infants? So why is it more common in infants? Because the ECF volume and intracellular fluid volume, ECF to ICF volume is ratio, that ratio is larger in infants and children than in adults. Therefore, dehydration develops more rapidly and is frequently more severe in children. What does this mean? See, in children, the amount of fluid in the ECF volume is more and their regulatory mechanisms are less developed. Thus, when they have a dehydration, they it'll it'll affect it'll they have dehydration more rapidly and it will be more severe when compared to adults. Right? Why? Next important question is why is water content less in females compared to males? That is because females tend to have more adipose tissue, and whereas, so this adipose tissue is relatively free of water. So the the total body water to body weight varies with the amount of fat that is present. Okay. So these are the important questions. I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.